Hey, thanks for the introduction. Howdy, everyone. Uh, very excited to be back for another StrapyConf. My name is Chad Carlson. I'm from the Developer Relations team at Platform.sh. And today I'm going to talk about front-end interchangeability. Uh, basically, what is it that we expect of uh, being able to place a variety of different front ends in, uh, in front of Strapi and um, what problems we think that that solves when we do it in the traditional way of deploying it in a couple different places and then a brief introduction to Platform SH and how uh, that changes the problem a bit when we kind of dedicate to the mono repo model of handling front ends and the kind of flexibility that that actually gives us for changing out those front ends. What's the main reason that people say this should decouple? You commit to a contract uh, uh, for the API and how they communicate with one another, right? And from there, you reach the agreement that allows the front and back end teams to remain in sync. And when you do that, that then gives you the flexibility to then hire the best people for each domain of this final application. So you hire the people most skilled and experienced with Strapi to handle the back end, and they don't have to worry about what's going on in the front end. Whereas you can then hire the people that are most skilled in Next.js or Django to consume that data and you really have the ability to forego looking for universalists and just look for somebody who's best suited for that domain. Another reason is that things change, especially in the Node world. In this ecosystem, there's a new framework coming out all the time. And you may find that some new framework that comes out is better suited for your business or for consuming your type of data or presenting it on devices the way that you really want to or for some new delivery method on a device that you're looking for. And so it gives you the ability to adapt to those changes that are kind of outside of your control. You are supposed to have this interchangeability to sort of future-proof your uh, final deployed site by being able to switch out a new application and consume that same data as they um, are released and become more evident as a better solution for what you're trying to do. And an another reason is that once you have this contract set up, you actually, the headless idea is really a many headed idea, right? At the end of the day is that as much as I can interchange front ends, I may find that Next.js is better suited for my mobile users and readers, whereas something like Gatsby may be better suited for our main site. And so I can actually have multiple heads consuming the same data just because I commit to this uh, decoupled model from the outset. But where do I do that exactly? The, f the, the goal is supposed to be that the front end and back end are truly decoupled, and that usually results in them being deployed in very different places. And that's great for isolation, for hiring specialists in those uh, domains, and for them to be concerned with just that part as long as they keep the API contract in mind and it stays consistent. Um, but then at the end of the day, we're still segregating. We have that original problem of what's hard about DevOps. We have teams who don't necessarily know how the whole thing gets put together. The goal is that they don't have to know, but I, I see it as a, as, a, as a pattern that could potentially create a certain lack of collaboration between the two teams because the deployment targets are totally different. And that's maybe not a problem most of the time until you get to this point of wanting to interchange the front end, right? Any large scale migration of your production site where you're trying to switch out your uh, Express or your Gatsby front end for now a Next.js front end is going to require a lot of attention to detail. Um, it's going to a lot of coordination between these two teams who typically don't need to have that kind of coordination just to get development environments going. When you're doing this large scale migration, um, this, this kind of different rules on both sides of the table when there's normally not a lot of collaboration required because of this contract, I mean, I see it as something that can cause problems. I don't know if you've heard of Platform SH before, but uh, a big part of what we like to say we do is it's Git first, um, and we'll often refer to our DevOps tooling as GitOps. Um, and it kind of breaks down into these three things. So the first one that moves towards standardized DevOps is Git acting as a sort of truth. Like I said, Git first. So if we have a repository that describes our application, describes our site, um, we say right from the outset that everything that um, has to do with deployment 
is tied to a branch. Every branch has the potential of becoming a development environment. And that within that branch, we commit everything about our infrastructure. So we have an abstraction of that infrastructure within YAML. And we leverage the branching behavior of Git protocol to make it so infrastructure is inherited branch to branch. With these couple components together, we get into the iterative development model by uh, not restricting you to necessarily stick to a staging development chain leading into production. Every single branch becomes a development environment, and any idea that you might have can just be taken into its own branch with its own isolated environment, and you can not be blocked by this normal feature chain and experiment in isolation as much as you want to. So let's look at what Strapi all by itself looks like on Platform SH. When we configure a deployment, it usually boils down to these three configuration files, one that defines the application, one that defines the managed services that we want to include in the cluster for an environment and how we want requests to be handled. So in this first uh, figure, this first snippet here at the top, we have the one that defines the application. In this case, we've named an application container that is of type Node.js 16 that is going to be handling its dependent, uh, dependencies with Yarn. We name that container Strapi, and we define how it gets built by installing those dependencies, running our uh, our build, and then starting the production environment. We also define a relationship to a database service, which gets defined in this services YAML file, which in this case is an Oracle MySQL container version 8.0. So with these two files alone, we've started building a cluster that has a specific version of Node, and it already has access to a managed service that gets explicitly defined with this 8.0 version of Oracle MySQL that the app can draw and store data from through this attribute of MySQL database. That's what it's going to be its address on this internal network. And uh, within the application container, any of our connection uh, credentials, the service credentials for this database are going to be stored in environment variables. Anything else important in terms of what port is being it's being served on, uh, or even how um, domains are being generated for the environment are all going to be accessible through these environment variables. Uh, and the third file here is this roots YAML file, which in this case, we can set up a subdomain at API across of our, our development environments. So it gets substituted for this default placeholder here that directs traffic directly to our Strapi application container. And so for each development environment we create, this api.subdomain will get a unique URL um, and uh, this relationship is going to stay consistent across our development environments. Um, the only other thing that we need to actually deploy is our database uh, JS config. When we have that first push, we're going to have this descriptions of our infrastructure, this collection of our Strapi code, including our collections, um, and any other environment variables we want to define. Uh, and with those three things, we're going to have a commit hash that then can be associated with the build. And so you see here on the first one, I'm going to start working on a new feature that is, uh, in this case, going to be me adding some new collections to Strapi. And so it has its own tree ID. And uh, when we create the new branch, it's going to reuse the build. We're not going to have to go through all the same build steps. And with that, we can be assured that what we're working on in our isolated development environment is the same exact byte for byte copy of what is in production. And because of the way Platform SH works, we're actually going to get the same data in that development environment too. And that's great because we can be sure that any tests that we run, uh, anything that we're trying to figure out what's going to be the behavior on the production environment, we're going to get a really, really accurate picture because it is the exact same copy that we have in production until we make another commit. And the same goes for that kind of assurance in the other, the other direction. So in this case, I'm merging the collections that I've added on this new environment to our production environment main. In the same case, I'm reusing the build based off of this tree ID that I had built in that isolated environment that I've run all my tests, QA signed off on. Everybody who is invested in this new change is signed off. 
we're literally just going to move that same image into production. And like I said, data is going to be carried along during this branching, you know, just because of the way we build on top of the Git protocol by prioritizing Git first. So if I take these two curls of the production environment and the new collections environment at this uh, article's endpoint, whatever data we have there is going to be identical until we make a change every time we do a branch. I started off by saying that the typical pattern is deploying these front-end and back-end applications in two different places, um, and why that might not be the best thing. So the alternative pattern, and the way we do it on platform, is we recommend putting it inside of a mono repo, committing configuration for a front-end app and a back-end application for Strapi inside of the same repository. And we're actually able to handle that. As long as they have configuration files, we can deploy them alongside each other. So the typical example of deploying front and back end applications with Strapi is the Food Advisor demo. And if you aren't familiar with it already, here's what it looks like. We have some seeded data that has to do with restaurant reviews and a couple blog articles with some authors of uh, uh, reviews and articles themselves that get seeded into Strapi, and it all gets pulled into a Next.js app, in this case called Food Advisor. We have a list of restaurants. We have the hours it's open, a collection of reviews, and four blog articles that come with that seeded data. So what we can do with that repository is just respect it. Already it's set up as a mono repo within the Strapi namespace. So what we have to do is add a platform app YAML file, just like we define one for Strapi, and define one for this front end Next.js client, and put it in that subdirectory. And then when we actually push that to platform, it will detect both of those application configurations and build both containers. And since they exist in this isolated internal network, they can communicate with each other and pull data directly from that adjacent uh, backend Strapi container directly within that same build deploy cycle. And this becomes interesting because we can build on top of the fact that every branch becomes a development environment and every branch gets production data for Strapi and relate that to the way we handle the front end too. So if I push this into production and I have a Next.js application pulling from Strapi, every time I make a branch, I'm gonna get that same exact relationship, the exact copy of both of those application containers with that production data. And so we now have an isolated space of a single front end back end instance at every single branch that we make. And here's what that behavior looks like when you deploy that environment um, that front end and back end together. So in this case, this is what Platform SH's console looks like. I can go to the production environment and we'll see now that we have two different generated URLs, one for the back end API and one for the front end. I can go ahead and go to uh, the API subdomain and check out Strapi, log in quickly and take a peek at what the front end looks like. This is exactly what I showed you before. Here's our front end Next.js site for Food Advisor. I'm gonna go ahead and go into one of the uh, blog articles, and um, I'm going to find that entry within Strapi. And once I do that, I retain this ability to dynamically change data within this same environment. Find the article, find the content entry, make a quick edit to that article and save it on production. And so this is existing on the same environment. It's adjacent, and I now have that updated on the production environment. And we could take a look at what that inheritance looks like too. So here we have that same production front end that's pulling in production data. What I'm gonna do is create a new branch for this new experiment. And we'll see, I have an exact copy of the front end that isn't pulling from my production environment. It's pulling from a replicated instance of my Strapi container on this development environment. So let's get into the front end interchangeability. So if we look at it, we have committed infrastructure with reusable builds and data that gets inherited alongside each one of these branching events that happens. Uh, and since a branch equals an environment, we have this isolated place that we can work on the front end or the back end right in the same workflow. So what does this mean? It means that we can very quickly say, I want to see what Gatsby looks like for the front end. So we can 
get a Gatsby starter, put it inside the repo, and add a platform app YAML file to it. And as soon as we define the build, we can begin testing exactly what that application is going to look like consuming the same strappy data in its isolated environment. We don't have to start a new instance somewhere else in the world on a different server and grab those credentials and set up an entirely different pipeline that when we may choose to migrate has to be coordinated to switch out that front end. It's just branch, add a new application, configure its build, and start working. So all it will mean then is we want to try a new front end. We take the same pattern that we have here for Strapi, which is name it container, saying what the uh, runtime language is, how we want to build dependencies, and how we want to start the container. And we can then, in this case, here's the copy that we have for Food Advisor. We want to just try out a new branch to see what Next.js looks like. In this case, building dependencies, running a build a little bit later so we can consume the data, and starting the application. And this will be the same case if we want to try out Gatsby. We'll run uh, npm serve. If we want to try 11D, we run a start command for 11D to consume the same data. And all of these things can run in parallel on an isolated environment. We can even define a separate runtime type that isn't a Node.js container for something like Golang to see what does our site look like, how does it perform, and what would migration look like if we started using Hugo with a Golang container in this case. And this is going to be the case no matter what programming language that we want to use. You know, Strapi has a long list of integrations, so it's not interchangeability just for front ends that might go for all these program languages. For any of our integrations, we can define a new application container that does something with our Strapi data and put it in the same repository to have as many apps as we really need to make our site function like we want it to across these languages. We just define an application container, uh, commit it, and uh, push it and see how it performs with that data. That's kind of uh, what I wanted to go over today in my talk, that this model of Git first through Platform SH and committed infrastructure and how development environments are provisioned can be leveraged to give you a really easily accessible testing space to work with replicated instances of your full front end back end relationship so that you can take a problem that would typically be potentially very stressful of trying to figure out how we can switch out a front end without breaking our production site and turn it into a Git branch, which you're doing all the time anyways. And uh, it just takes a little bit of definition, uh, again, for that platform app YAML file. We have a lot of strappy resources at Platform SH. If you go ahead and go to GitHub to the Platform SH templates namespace, you'll find uh, six or seven there that go through uh, the gamut of uh, typical Strapi version 3 and 4 templates all the way into a couple of these front end back end relationship. And actually, we have something new of a workshop that I gave last year at last Strapi Comp that we have since um, repurposed and fixed a few things to try and uh, showcase exactly what I'm talking about uh, a little bit better. Uh, and in this case, if you go to platform dash workshop slash Strapi, you'll have the opportunity to actually go through the flow yourself of switching out these front ends where you can start with a complete starter Strapi site that's reading from a SQLite database, add on a production database instance and make that your production Strapi instance, and then create a branch and tack on Next.js, uh, merge that and see how it inherits create a branch and switch out for Gatsby. And we'll continue adding to this workshop over time. If you're interested in these ideas and you want to see how simple it can really be to put this into the same workflow uh, and you want to get your hands dirty, this is probably the best place to check those uh, examples out. So thank you very much for having me. Again, my name is Chad Carlson from the DevRel team at Platform SH. And um, I hope you enjoy the rest of your Strapi comp. Thanks for coming.